All right, well, why don't we go ahead and get started and I'm sure we'll have some other folks uh, join us um, as we um, move along. And also being sensitive to um, uh, the many other commitments we have, you know, feel free if you need to bow out um, to our guests, uh, feel free to do so. And um, a friendly reminder that this is being recorded. So it will be available at another um, time in case you have to um, miss it uh, a portion, um, as well as um, we hope that you maybe share this with your friends because um, we're very proud of Sage Hen Athletics and um, we're thrilled tonight to welcome um, Miriam uh, to our Pitzer at Home series. So a, um, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Pamela Jones Tintel and I currently serve as Associate VP for College Advancement at Pitzer College. Um, I am also a huge, huge sports fan and former student athlete, so it brings me great pleasure to participate in tonight's Sage Hen uh, chat. Um, tonight's chat is brought to you by Pitzer College Office of Alumni and Family Engagement and our uh, relatively new Pitzer at Home series. Um, uh, so without further ado, I would love to have the chance to um, welcome and introduce our Director of Athletics and Chair of Physical Education, Miriam Merrill. Um, I have the pleasure of um, uh, reading her bio and keep in mind this is an edited bio because uh, my friend here had very, a lot of accomplishments and so we cut it back a little bit. So here we go. Miriam joined Pomona Pitzer Athletics as the Director of Athletics and Chair of Physical Education in July of 2020. Miriam previously served Hamilton College as the Associate Director of Athletics, Senior Woman Administrator in January 2017. Merrill was the Director of Athletics at Richard J. Daly College in Chicago from 2012 until 2014 and also previously taught in the kinesiology department at Temple University. Miriam received a bachelor's degree in communication from the University of Cincinnati, where she was inducted into the James P. Kelly Athletics Hall of Fame in 2012. She has a master's of education degree in sports administration from Xavier University, and in 2019 completed her doctorate in psychology of human movement from Temple. So again, without further ado, welcome um, uh, Miriam. So with insert proverbial rah rah, yay, applause, wonder. Thank you. Thank you. So excited to be here. Yes. So um, again, folks, we have a, a, a set list of questions. Um, however, if there's a burning question, feel free to submit that via the chat and we'll be happy as time allows to address that. So um, Miriam, tell us a little bit about yourself and your background and how did athletics enhance your own academic experience and future endeavors? Sure. So I've had kind of a long experience with athletics. So um, I grew up in Ohio in a really, really small town. Um, and I remember being very young and was horribly shy, like was always on my mom, right? And so she was like, we have to figure out a way for you to like get off of my hip. Um, and athletics actually ended up being that. So about fifth grade, she enrolled me into Biddy Basketball, which is, you know, the, we're coached by the varsity uh, women's varsity girls team. Um, and so I remember playing and as I played and kind of realized I'm kind of good at this, like feeling like I was more of, um, I could be more of a person, right? I could, I could talk more and I could be more of an individual. And so that's when I first kind of realized just how important sports could be. Uh, and, and it was for me. So from there, I ended up, you know, playing sports all the way through college. Um, and, you know, something about being in athletics for so long, once I was done, I was like, you know what, I don't want to go to practice anymore. Nobody has to tell me what to do, right? Like, I'm sports, I'm done. I thought I was going to work in um, public relations and just, you know, do that and be great at that. Um, but about two years of being out of athletics was when I was like, Oh, I miss it, right? And so um, that's when I went back to get my master's in sport and administration, knowing that I wanted to be back in college athletics. So, you know, I had a really great experience as a student athlete, both high school, uh, youth sports, and then in college. And that certainly has been kind of the foundation that I use as an administrator, right? So I want to make sure that I can create the space 
um, for students to have a really great experience, um, especially so that they can leave, you know, here and say, gosh, that was great. Um, and so being able to have a part in that, I think is what's largely kind of fueled me um, to be an administrator. Great, great. Well, um, I think all of us um, uh, that have a love of athletics or participated in athletics understand the importance of that to the um, education of the whole person, if you will. So um, uh, we were glad that you found us uh, Sage Hens. So tell us a little bit about uh, what attracted you to consider coming to Pomona Pitzer um, and um, applying for this opportunity as, um, for the Sage Hens. Yeah. So, you know, that's a good question. So previous, uh, prior to here, I was at Hamilton College, and that was the first time that I got to experience the liberal arts education. So I went to a state school, you know, I had a great experience, but once I was on a campus and got to see kind of what that really means, I knew that this is where I wanted to continue to be kind of moving forward. Um, and so being at a highly selective liberal arts institution is where I knew I wanted to stay. And so when the position came open, I was like, oh gosh, wouldn't this be great? Um, and so as you know, time went on and interviews went on, uh, it's interesting because it all happened during COVID, right? So I never got to come out and visit. All of my interviews were just like this. Um, and so when I was offered the position, I was so excited, but I knew that I was gonna make a decision of sight unseen. But what really kind of pushed me into like, this is the right decision, was just knowing that the people that I got to engage with, uh, both on Pomona's campus and Pitzer's campus, all really seemed to be devoted to the student and the student experience. And that was something very special. And for that to come through in an interview virtually, right, really meant something. So um, I certainly am grateful to be here and excited to, to see where we go from here. Excellent. Well, again, we're so happy to have you um, um, uh, joining our team, if you will. Um, a little bit of a personal question, if you don't mind. Um, so from my understanding, you most recently were in New York mm -hmm. and all the way out to California. Yes. Tell me about uh, maybe what surprised you most about um, coming to California. Yeah. Um, and like I said, sign on the scene, right? And great weather, right? But I think the the Number one thing that I was um, surprised by is how there's such a temperature swing, right? So on the East Coast and in the Midwest, you know, it might get up to 90 and it's humid and it's hot. And in the evening, it might get up, you know, still stay around 80 and it's humid and it's hot. But here, I was not prepared for the swing, right? Like at nighttime, the first night that I was outside, I was like, I need a jacket. Oh my God. Like, and that, in my mind, just didn't register, right? It just, it should be hot all the time here. So I think that's probably one of the, the biggest things, surprises that I experienced moving here. Well, as a native Southern Californian, um, uh, we definitely pull out, you know, the Ugg boots and the big jackets, you know, if we dip but uh, starting, you know, 69, 68 degrees and stuff, that's uh, uh, California cold for us. Yeah. So. I run away, so. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> Tell us about your vision for the Pomona Pitzer uh, program and what do you see as needed as next steps to build towards that vision? Yeah, you know, I, I'm grateful to step into um, a, a department where success has already started, right? And success means more than just athletic success, right? But just the success that student athletes leave here and have a really great experience. Kind of the, the alumni that I have talked to thus far have really just really appreciated the experience that they've had. So I think being able to kind of step into success that already exists and to continue that is really what I see um, as being important. You know, the, the community here really understands the importance of a co-curricular experience. And that means a lot, right? Particularly for athletics. So, you know, I think that continued um, it will allow us to progress and continue to be successful and to continue to impact um, student athletes in their lives. Tell us what do you find most rewarding about being an athletics administrator? Yeah, being with students. Um, so the funny thing is, is and, you know, this is really to me, I had a division one student athlete experience loved it uh, but as an administrator i really just the core of me belongs to division three and the difference between the two is as a division one student athlete i didn't know who my athletic director was right there were so many layers between the athletic director and the student athlete 
Um, and, and being able to impact students and walk around campus and students, you know, saying, hey, Miriam, right? Eventually, they'll know who I am. <laughs> and eventually, we'll be back on campus. But I think that is what I really appreciate. Um, and like I said before, having a great experience and being able to make sure that that is the experience of others um, really is, is what I find rewarding about what I do. And then to get to work in a field that everybody wishes they could, right? So if you were to pull, you know, 90% of the population probably say, gosh, I'd love to work in athletics. Um, it really is rewarding. So I think that's why what I love most about it. Well, and I really appreciate you reflecting on the importance of um, that mentorship with students and connectivity and such. I know um, from my own experience, I'm uh, still in contact with my athletic director and you know some coaches over the years and stuff. So that bond, um, as well as teammates, of course. So uh, that bond is so important. And when I would be negligent if I didn't also give a shout out to the athletic parents, right? Because they uh, they definitely become part of the team in their own mm -hmm. way. So um, that's so uh, important that connectivity. Absolutely. Um, who or what maybe inspired you to pursue uh, a career path in athletics administration? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like I said, I thought I was going to work in public relations, right? Um, but my college track coach, I remember it was my last indoor meet, um, and he said, hey, Miriam, come this way. I want to introduce you to, her name is Brenda Ware, who was a trailblazer back in the day uh, as, as it relates to being a commissioner at the Division I level. Um, and so she was a, co a commissioner at uh, Conference USA, and he said, I just want to introduce you, and I'm kind of like, why? But, you know, okay. So I had a chance to kind of talk to her. She told me about what she did as a commissioner and, you know, how conferences exist and, you know, how student athletes can kind of do this whenever they're done. And I was like, oh gosh, that sounds interesting, right? But then I was like, but I'm going to be in public relations. So there's that. Um, so then kind of once I left and realized, gosh, I want to be back in, I remember being grateful for at least having that initial conversation from my coach uh, because it's something that he saw in me. And so then once I went back to grad school, because I was back in Cincinnati at Xavier, um, he really kind of took me under his wing and introduced me to a lot of the administrators at Cincinnati who are now in administrative positions. And so, you know, from there, I really got a sense of kind of what it was like to be an administrator. But before I was an administrator, I was a coach, right? So he kind of helped me uh, along that way as well. Um, so I really think it was him kind of knowing, and that's kind of how it is, right? Mentors kind of know it before you know it. Um, and he really kind of was like, I think this is something you should explore. So I'm, I'm grateful for him uh, and seeing that in me uh, way back when, so. Wonderful. And based on that response, again, I'm um, hoping that you are um, open for um, uh, uh, such conversations, similar conversations and mentorship with student athletes, right? Absolutely. And or non-student athletes, anyone in our Pinter or Pomona communities. Yeah, and you know, one of the things that I always talk about is, you know, I am where I am only because people helped me, right? And that really is my job is to help reach, connect. So anytime any NCA internships come through, pass my email, I always make sure to shoot it out to the student athlete body um, and as well as coaches, because I think it takes a village, right, for us and we're all still growing and learning. So that certainly has become very important for me as an administrator. So I'm guessing that you um, uh, obviously have started new jobs before, and that's those are always a challenge. But um, uh, starting a new job during a pandemic, probably you never thought you would be um, asked such a question. Can you share some of the strategies Pomona Pitzer um, Athletics is utilizing to keep student athletes inspired and engaged during these unprecedented times? Yeah. Yeah, that's a great question. You know, it's been really important for us to engage students, even though we aren't on campus and aren't playing, uh, you know, it's really important for us to engage them. And, and one of the things I talked about with our, our faculty coaches and our, our department is, you know, we talk about all these ways that we want to support students in their growth, uh, but we just don't have the time to do it because they're going to practice, they're studying, they're reading. Um, but now that they aren't on campus, gosh, here's a time where we can try to engage with them in these other ways. And so, you know, there's three different things that we're talking about now. So one of them is mental health. 
Um, so we know that the NCAA did a, a study about COVID-19 and its impact on student athletes um, in this past semester, right? And what we found generally speaking is that students were battling with um, feelings of isolation, um, depression, right, had really increased. And so it really is important for us as we enter in this semester that is again virtual and while it will be different in very a lot of ways, right, um, we want to make sure that we are still uh, able to kind of create that sense of connectedness and lack of and, and present or uh, lessen the the isolation that student athletes will feel. So they were having drop in hours um, for our student athletes to kind of drop in and talk to um, our counseling folks. Um, we'll also do some some uh, social media stuff where it's you know self care kits on how to take care of yourself, meditation, all of those different types of things, knowing that uh, we need to continue to engage with our students student athletes about mental health. So another thing too is just diversity, equity, and inclusion. You know, I'm grateful that our department has done a phenomenal job prior to my start of really starting to kind of rev up in the diversity, equity, and inclusion work. Um, and one of the things I want to make sure that I mention is we were just nominated as a department for the NCA LGBTQ Department of the Year Award. Um, and that, yeah, it's phenomenal. And that really is a test to the work that our department and both institutions have really done um, to support those student athletes. Um, and so we'll continue to do those, right? So whether it's creating affinity groups for student athletes that have particular identities, whether it be LGBTQ, student athletes of color, right? All of these other groups so that they can have this sense of, of, of connectedness. Um, we'll probably think about like speakers, readings, and then just as a department, how we continue to educate and move the needle as it relates to diversity, equity, and inclusion. And then lastly, um, a leadership institute, right? So we always talk about our student athletes are leaders on campus and they do a phenomenal job, um, but this is a way for us to engage with them in a way that's a little bit more intentional. Um, so talking about things such as, you know, tough conversations and, you know, how to have core values and how you can help connect with other students on your team who might have a different personality or personality profile than you. So, all of these types of things that create um, better leaders are, are things that we're going to engage in. And then lastly, our coaches are committed to remaining connected to our student athletes. So whether that's means to just say, hey, how are you? Um, or, hey, let's, you know, engage in some push-ups today or, you know, or whatever that ends up being. Um, I imagine it will be largely kind of driven by the group uh, and then collectively with the coaches. So, you know, we've really tried to be creative about, you know, just because we aren't playing, we can still engage our student athletes. And here are the, the certain topics that are really important for us to make sure that we're engaging with during this time. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go off topic just a little bit and um, go to the chat room. Uh, we have a great question. Um, suspension of all athletics for fall has been very difficult for athletics or, or for all athletes, um, but in particular our seniors um uh who might uh this be it if you will um uh and you don't obviously want to go out that way pure speculation but do you have possible plans for fall sports to be held in the spring sure about that yeah sure so that's something that we're talking about now is what's the possibility of us to have sports um in the spring i think we're gonna certainly try our best to figure out how we can make it happen. Um, but it's probably largely going to look like condensed seasons for um, fall and possibly for, for winter as well. Um, because we know that NCAA is still gonna house, as of now, they're still going to support the uh, winter NCAA championships and spring NCAA championships. And then for spring sports, you know, how can we have, because they were impacted last season, right? So how can we support um, a season or competition or experience for them as well? So that's our hope. There's a lot of intricate parts that will have to move as it relates to testing and, and density requirements as a county and all of those things. But we certainly are now starting to have those uh, conversations about how can we do this in the spring and do it safely. I can absolutely relate. My husband is a high school um, uh, basketball coach and uh, golf coach and um, juggling, um, you know, all of those seasons. And like you said, a lot of moving parts. So um, we appreciate everyone's um, understanding and flexibility. And it sounds like Miriam, um, uh, you definitely have the student athletes um, uh, interests at heart, no doubt. Yeah, absolutely. And want to, again, just make, make sure that we're all safe, right? So we have a testing protocol and all of those things. Uh, but yeah, we, we would love to be up and running in the spring. Um, 
I know that your role uh, also entails representing all of our very competitive club sports, intramural programs, and physical education activities. Can you comment on strategies being utilized to engage um, these students? Sure. And it's much of the same way, right? So virtually. Um, but I'll talk about physical education first. So um, we are engaged. So some of the classes that are hard to run when you don't have equipment, all of those things, we've kind of replaced those um, classes, but we're still running uh, like a walking class, a running class, you know, dance, aerobics. So all of those classes that students can still kind of engage in a safe way, uh, we're still doing. So you know, again, we talk about kind of the mental health and how that uh, COVID-19 has impacted um, students and how um, just isolation has impacted students in general. It's important for us to continue to offer, you know, these physical education outlets for students. Um, as it relates to club and intramurals, same thing. So clubs will kind of, they'll still, they'll gather, right, as groups, and they'll still engage in some of those sign-up activities. So um, I believe in the fall, there's a, a turf dinner that happens where all the, the dining halls um, host dinner outside and then all the clubs are out and about and get a chance to kind of talk about what they're doing. I believe they're doing that virtually. So the clubs will be there as well for students to kind of sign up. And I imagine initially it'll be more about hey, this is what Ultimate Frisbee is like, and this is what we hope to do uh, when the spring comes. Um, and then the same thing with intramurals. But we'll also be doing some intramural um, or some virtual uh, activities. So whether it's eSports, trivia nights, um, game nights. So there'll be all these kind of virtual activities to, to keep students connected. And again, if I haven't said it enough, this sense of community and connectedness is really going to be important. So that's the way that we could um, contribute there. Um, and as we kind of talk about like how activities happen, I might as well just kind of talk about um, the RAIN Center because I know that could potentially be a question for folks. So the RAIN Center is on hold um, until we kind of understand where we're at and, and COVID-19 and all of that. Um, but certainly as things change, uh, we'll make sure that, that folks are aware uh, once we get the, the green light to move ahead with that. But it hasn't, it hasn't moved off the, the burner. It's just got a quick pause to it. Um, and we're excited about that. Great. Um, again, I'm gonna go off a little bit off script. Um, we've got a great question from uh, Scott. Um, can you talk, if at all, about the budget um, uh, impact uh, for athletics. Um, I know both uh, Pomona um, individually and Pitzer individually um, have been um, uh, doing incredible work to crunch numbers um, and um, address the uh, budget shortfalls that this uh, pandemic is um, um, causing uh, the campuses to face. Can you chat a little bit about how that may have um, already impacted athletics and hopefully if we're back in the spring, what would the budget look like? Sure. Yeah, so we won't technically know kind of what the budget will look like until all of, you know, the enrollments and classes have started and all of that. Um, but what I would say is that there hasn't been any conversation and, and, and I think other campuses have said, we've got to cut these five sports in order to meet the budget. That has not been a conversation and will not be part of the conversation. I've certainly got that confirmation from both presidents and um, uh, the faculty on both sides and, and student affairs, VP of student affairs. Um, so that's not any part of the conversation. Now, might we have a reduced budget so that we'll have you know, maybe we won't be able to travel to Santa Cruz to play. Potentially, yes, those are all things that are on the table. Uh, but I think what I'm largely encouraged by is that the importance of co-curricular activity on campus is important. So what can we do to make sure that we're having that? It might not be this robust experience that we're used to, right? Um, but how can we still um, engage in that? And maybe that's just conference only competition. Um, but those are all questions and thoughts, um, but we certainly won't have these final answers until later. But, but ultimately, sports will be here. We're not going anywhere, uh, and there's no intention to cut any teams or anything of that sort. But yeah, great question. Yeah, well, and from my uh, you know, own observations, friends um, of either um, athletic alumni or coaches or athletic administrators, um, uh, both here as well as other institutions, um, um, it's one great big community. Yes, you know, uh, there is a ton of competition um, on the field, but a lot of um, uh, um, collegiality off the field, right? Did, 
especially in this um, uh, crazy situation we have. Absolutely. Okay. Um, let's see. As you know, Pomona Pitzer uh, Athletics is unique in that it is a partnership between two different, different institutions of higher learning. Can you comment on the opportunities you see in this very unique relationship between Pitzer and Pomona? Yeah, sure. And I think we've talked about it already, right, is this sense of community and support. You know, I think one of the things that um, we started to do a really great job is to make sure that it is both institutions that are represented as we just do even some of the smaller things, whether it's meetings or events, right, and making sure that it is both Pomona College and Pisser College that is involved with all of those things. Um, you know, and even down to kind of some of the smaller things. As we think about Reigns uh, Center, you know, they'll have a, a swipe code right to enter. You know, one of the things we want to make sure is that uh, Pitzer students don't have a separate swipe card, right? Like all student athletes should have the same swipe card that gets them into the athletic facility, right? So even those small things that say we are one, we are not two, right? And I speak from uh, a, an athletic department perspective, right? We are one. Um, so I think that's, that's really the ways in which we uh, do a phenomenal job is just being a community and continuing to build upon that. Well, and it's terrific to hear you say things like that because um, uh, I've been at Pitzer now about nine years and um, talking to some of um, the alumni that uh, competed back in the day um, of um, not always being made to feel equal. Um, and uh, I think, you know, little things even like uh, we re a couple years ago got athletic academic credit for Pitzer student athletes mm -hmm. that were competing in which Pomona as well as the whole SCIAC already uh, was doing. So um, it's great to hear that you're um, willing and have that vision and enthusiasm to continue that one team um, philosophy. Absolutely. Um, let's go back to the chat um, and a very specific question from Willard here. For football, basketball, baseball, how would you compare Skyac play versus NESCAC? The NESCAC. Willie just kind of put me on the spot here, but just know my loyalty lies here. So I'm going to say Skyac all day, every day. And I will say that to my NESCAC peers now. They know. They know. This is where my loyalty lies. Absolutely. I love it. I love it. Um, we have a number of alumni and families participating in tonight's presentation, which is terrific. And I, again, a shout out. I see it a lot of familiar. Uh, names and friends on this um, uh, uh, Zoom presentation. So this is awesome. What are ways uh, that um, our alumni and families can help and support Sage Hen Athletics? What do you need? Yeah, yeah, that's a great question. You know, I think the biggest thing is just to stay involved, right? Um, just because we aren't engaging in athletics this, sem uh, this semester, doesn't mean that we don't want you to still be engaged with us. Um, and so there's a few ways that that can be done. Uh, one, certainly social media. So we, our sports information staff are doing a phenomenal job of pushing out just kind of student interest stories about uh, what's going on in our department and students who have been successful both on and out, in and outside of their sports. Uh, so staying engaged in Twitter and, um, you know, Facebook and, and Instagram. Um, I think also attending events like these, right? So staying connected with the department in those kind of non-traditional ways is going to be great. Um, and then watching us online when we're back. So if you can't make it back to campus, um, you know, watching, tuning into a stream to support us from afar means a lot. It really means a lot. Um, and then lastly, for those who are interested, we also, you know, would recommend and encourage a, a financial support. So if that's something that is available to you, um, certainly visit the website uh, to donate uh, financially. But I think any of those ways, we will take them. We just really want to continue to have uh, an engaged group of alums and families uh, behind us as we continue to compete uh, moving forward. Great. Um... Is there anything else you would like to add that maybe um, I haven't um, uh, asked you yet? No, I think you got it. I mean, and if I could say it one more time, like just the sense of community that I've really experienced has been phenomenal. I cannot wait for the day 
that I can walk around campus and see people, you know, more than just like neck up um, and just engage with the community. So far, I have just been blown away by the supportiveness, you know, because it has been a different time for me to engage during COVID-19. Uh, but just the, and even the alums that I've already engaged with who just said, gosh, we're excited. Let us know how we can help. Um, it's been, it's been phenomenal. So. Great. Um, I'm going to paraphrase maybe a couple more questions. Um, so, um, support from the athletics administrator, or excuse me, let me rephrase, support from Pitzer administration and support from Pomona administration. Um, uh, you know, connectivity with the presidents, um, President uh, Oliver, President Starr, um, student affairs, so on and so forth, uh, folks like myself. How are you feeling? Are you feeling love and welcome from the respective um, administrations? Absolutely, absolutely, yes. And while I don't meet with them, you know, often, we have connected whenever I first got here. Um, and actually, as we were navigating kind of the SCIAC schedule where we would be, we were on uh, constant conversations, but yeah, they have been largely supportive, both President Oliver and President Starr. Mm -hmm. And just giving also of another example from my own experience, um, I know um, with our former AD, for example, we even raised the question at one point, how, how come we only uh, were having a uh, Pomona faculty athletic rep? Why didn't we have a Pitzer one too? And that quickly got resolved. So again, um, uh, we are always as much as possible conscious of trying to represent both schools um, uh, throughout um, the organization. Mm -hmm. um, we have another question from um, uh, incoming uh, parent, uh, baseball parent, um, asking about the spring sports. And I know that you kind of addressed it, but can you give us a little Cliff Notes version on that for the spring sports, just to make sure Jeff uh, feels some love that we answered his question. Sure. So first thing I'll say to Jeff is OH. <laughs> if you could speak back, I hope you would say IO. Um, but yeah, so, you know, it's, we're kind of just planning for the best, right? Which is everybody's kind of up and run, running in the spring. It's really hard August 18th, right? To say what we're going to be doing January on. Um, but we are certainly trying to plan um, for, for everyone's return. What I will say is that the professional uh, model uh, is very different, right? The professional model does not take into account the academic piece, right? So I think for us to kind of structure and model after that would be uh, not true to who we are, right? It's to really understand the balance of the student and the balance of the athlete. Um, so while I think those kind of bubble frameworks are working for professional sports. I'm not sure that that is um, something that would be true to our, our core philosophy of the student athlete, right? Because we want students to be engaged in class with others and still a part of this club and all of that. Um, and that the bubble kind of mentality that the professional sports have kind of followed doesn't necessarily um, allow that to happen. But, but yeah, with, with what we've got, we're trying to plan for it and hope we can, we can pull it off. Um, let's do maybe one more question because I know we've got some other things, actually one and a half questions I'll say. Um, so the connection with the from the coaches with their teams and stuff and um, this commitment maybe to you know, make sure that athletes, student athletes are staying conditioned and stuff. Um, can you talk a little bit about any strategies um, uh, using um, uh, for that area, keeping our student athletes healthy? Sure, okay. sure. Yeah, yeah, and that's kind of a concern, right, is that students will have been off for since last March, right, when we sent everyone home to now. Um, and so we want to make sure that when, when students come back, the phase into sport is a safe one as well. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about the NCA and kind of how they've changed things. So up until now, the NCA has said, your season is this 19-week season, right? It starts at this point, and then it ends with the NCA championship. But now that the NCA championship for fall is not happening, they've been like, oh gosh, now what do we do? And as people are starting to think, talk about spring, they're like, what are we going to do? How are we going to allow students to both be students and be athletes? Uh, and so what they've come up with is 114 days that teens and students have to operate and do athletically related activities. So as a coach, uh, I have 114 days from 
you know, maybe August 10, depending on what sport I have, until the end of the year. And so if I want to play in the spring, I've got to account that I've got to save a couple of days. Uh, but then virtually, now that we're virtual, I might say to my team, hey, let's get together and watch film together, right? And so that can be counted as an athletically related activity. So that's kind of been a small shift. Um, and so coaches are going to engage their teams, but still keeping into account, you know, what do students need? Because I think it's this like delicate balance between, you know, not wanting to overload students as we're virtual, but still wanting to stay engaged. So maybe it's not practice, maybe it's we sit and talk about how you're feeling isolated or you're stressed out because, you know, mom keeps popping in whenever you're on class. All of those different things, um, I think that we have the flexibility to talk about within those 100 people. Great. And I would be remiss if I didn't give a little shout out um, to uh, Pitzer, um, uh, making folks aware that um, uh, we used to just have our strength and conditioning coach um, as a part-time employee and through an anonymous uh, Pitzer donor, we were able to um, uh, secure that person for full-time employment um, and a wonderful um, testimony to um, uh, the importance of um, athletics um, for the Pomona and Pitzer campuses, as well as in a great example of the impact that donors can have um, uh, for um, our program. So um, maybe one more transition question. Are you, are, are you competitive, Miriam? Yeah. Uh, are you uh, competitive? Uh, am I? I mean, I keep a good lid on it, right? And I'm not a sore loser, but I am very competitive. So let me give you an example. So at my previous institution, um, Football coach is like super competitive too. And so he was like, yeah, I'm really good at uh, table tennis, ping pong. But I'm like, you, you can't be that good, right? Like, you can't be that good. And he was like, well, let's play. He smoked me, right? So first of all, after he smoked me the first time, I was like, all right, let's play again. Like, we literally played for four hours until I got close to almost winning. And then I was like, all right, we can be done. And then after that, I, every day I was in his office, when are we going to play again? We, and then <laughs> I went and had lessons from our, our squash coach, gave me some lessons so I could like beat him the next time we played. But yes, I'm super competitive. I try to keep a lid on it. I'm not a sore loser, but yes, I love to compete. Well, I think I appreciate that. And I'm known for being a little competitive too. And uh, why don't we transition um, kind of what we're calling game on, right? So why don't, why don't you uh, talk about what we're going to be doing next? Absolutely. So I am so excited to be able to lead this game night or the rest of the trivia night with you all. So what you'll need now is your cell phone. So if you want to go ahead and take some time to get your cell phones out. And then while you do that, I will share my screen. And while you're doing that, I'm going to, I came a little prepared for my, my game on. I got a hat, got some pom-poms, got nice. ready to go. Game on. Nice. All right. So let's go ahead and hit play here. There we go. And um, this program um, that we're loading up, it's called Kahoot. Is that right? It is. Yes, Kahoot. it is called Kahoot. And for, and for um, especially our alumni, this is not to be confused with Kahoot Tech of our famous music festival at Pitzer. I know they smell a lot of like yeah. Great. Okay, so we're in. So what you're going to do now is go to this website here, www.kahoot.it, and then you're going to enter in this 
in bleachers. Good. And so, Karen, what I think I'll do is I'll wait for you to give me the thumbs up when you think everyone's in, or we can maybe ask if everyone's in, and then uh, in the chat room or something, and then I'll hit start. So I'll wait for you to let me know when to start. All right. We'll do one more minute, folks. One more minute. Sorry, I don't have that big arena voice. One minute. One minute. <laughs> you got to use your diaphragm. So one thing I'll also tell you all as we're still waiting on these last few minutes um, is so Kahoot basically, so this is how it's going to work. There'll be a trivia question. You'll get about five seconds to kind of read the trivia question and then it'll either be multiple choice or true and false. And so you'll use your phone as a keypad to answer. You get points based on how fast you answer and if your answer is correct. Okay, so that's how we determine. Yeah, there will be a prize. There will be a prize to be announced later. Let's hit it, Miriam. Let's go. All right, here we go. First question. So this is an easy one. Let's just get us used to this. Give you a hit. This guy. Right here. All right, wait a minute. We got some people. Yep, you gotta click on the trigger, huh? You gotta pay attention. That was a trick. All right, so we got PPSB in the lead. Scott's in second. All right, next question. This is an important question given news nowadays. Okay, 80% accuracy. Wikipedia was the answer. Wikipedia. All right, let's see where we're at now. So oh, I want to give a give a consolation prize to the, the whoever shows the onion. That's tremendous. <laughs> All right, PPSB still in the lead. Scott still in second. EDB just close behind. All right, next question. True or false? Ooh, that's a good one. False. It actually was uh, the Macintosh computer, for those of you who do not know. Looks like most of you got it right. All right, let's see who's in the lead. Oh, EDB slipped up to the top. And PPSB is in fourth now. Team Bleachers moved up. All right, next question. Big pen, big pen. Some people thought Charlie Brown, huh? All right, let's see who's in the lead. EDB still holding, holding steady. All right, next question. Mongooses is the answer. Yeah, I thought it would have been mongoose as well. All right, let's see where we're at. EDB, nice. All right. All right, looks like Team Moore is up. All right, so next question. Amtrak. Yeah, only one person got that right. I wonder if that was a guess. If they guessed right, good job. All right, let's see who's in the lead. Ooh, Jelly moving back up. EDB still in the lead. 
All right, I believe we have three more questions left. Next question. All right, let's do it, guys. Let's do it, pens. Nice. Everyone got that right. All right, let's see who answered it quickly. Sheesh. EDB still on top. Team Bleacher still up there. All right, we got two more left. Boston Marathon. Yeah. Iron Man, huh? That threw some people off. All right, let's see where we're at. EDB still holding strong. All right, just two more left. Eddie Bauer. Yeah, that was a tricky one. That was a tricky one. All right, let's see where we're at. Sheesh, no movement there. All right, this is it. This is it. True or false? True, the answer is true. All right, let's see where we okay, end up. All. Who's the winner? So we'll go third place is Scott. Hot. Congratulations, Scott. Team Bleachers. EDB. Woo. All right. Congratulations. I would ask, this was terrific, Miriam, and um, uh, again, shows our competitive nature. I would ask um, if uh, those that um, uh, are first, second, and third place folks, if you could uh, comment in the chat um, your uh, true names, um, we'll maybe send you a little something um, uh, from uh, Pitzer, so, and um, Sage Hens. So if you could identify yourself in the chat, that would be appreciated. Um, let's see, is there anything else, uh, Miriam, you would like to um, talk about that we may have missed tonight? No, I think it's, that's been great, a great conversation. Please, you all, as you come back, come back often, come see me, come say hello. I'd love to hear stories about how your experience was or how you're connected to a student athlete that has been at our institution or is. Um, so please don't hesitate to come, come see me when we open back up. Okay, a couple more things. Um, uh, again, um, uh, let's give a virtual round of applause for Miriam. Woo! Yay, yay. Um, I also wanna give a shout out um, uh, and also kind of loop in a little bit of a question that came in earlier. Um, uh, our uh, winners uh, will receive a gift card from uh, the student run Pitzer store, which uh, carries uh, some wonderful Pitzer as well as um, Sage Hen um, uh, athletic gear, um, and that can be reached at uh, uh, pitzer.edu slash store. So we'll be having that um, come your way. However, Miriam, we did receive an inquiry about um, the Nike store, that um, uh, Nike gear available with athletics. Can you comment on that? I'm sorry, you're coming in and out. What was the question about? Um, about uh, the status of the Nike um, athletics gear, being able to purchase that. Because someone said that the Nike um, link is down. Mm, I'm not sure. Well, so my email is available online. Shoot me an email and I'll see if I can investigate and get an answer for you. Okay. And um, 
Uh, we'll um, take a look at who um, asked that question and um, we'll uh, follow up accordingly to try and uh, get you an answer with that. Um, last but not least, uh, for our participants, give yourselves a round of applause. Again, we really appreciate your participation and a friendly reminder that your Pitzer Office of Alumni and Family Engagement is committed to providing resources to assist, educate, and entertain as we continue navigating these unprecedented times. We hope you will continue to stay active and mindful of your Sage Hen community, and we look forward to seeing you again at a future Pitzer at Home activity. Previta Faturi and go Sage Hens. Thank you and good night.